pressure. So we have a lot to accomplish in this uh, video. We have four different goals. First, we're going to write out Archimedes' principle. We will discuss density. We'll define and discuss what pressure is. And we'll look at the connection between pressure and the buoyant force. Okay, so what is Archimedes' principle? And we know this is true. The buoyant force acting on an object is proportional to the volume of fluid displaced by that object. But we can do a lot better than that. We can say that the buoyant force acting on an object is equal to the weight of fluid displaced by that object. And that is known as Archimedes' principle after Archimedes, who was Greek. And here that is expressed as an equation. Buoyant force is the mass of the displaced fluid times g, or you can write that as is often done, the density of the fluid times the volume of fluid displaced times g. And density here is symbolized by the Greek letter rho. It looks a little, little bit like a p, but it's the Greek letter rho. And density is mass divided by volume. Okay, so again, density is mass over volume. And what determines whether an object floats or sinks in a fluid? Well, just the density, how the densities compare. An object with a lower density than the fluid will float in the fluid. If an object has a higher density than the fluid, it sinks in that fluid. And we can also talk about specific gravity. So that's the ratio of the density of the material to the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius, in fact. So what's special about water at 4 degrees Celsius? Seems like a funny number to pick, but it turns out water is most dense at that temperature. So for instance, aluminum has a, spe a specific gravity of 2.7, which means it is 2.7 times more dense than water at 4 degrees Celsius. Water at 4 degrees Celsius. The aluminum doesn't have to be at 4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we've got a whole table of densities here. Note that these range over about 40 orders of magnitude. So we've got interstellar space, hardly anything there. Air is about, you know, a thousandth of what water at 4 degrees C is. Earth, the planet, is about specific gravity of 5.5, or 5.5 times the density of water. And black holes can have actually a wide range of densities, so that's just one particular value a black hole can have for density. Okay, what about pressure? Well, pressure is force per unit area. And what is it, where does it come from? You know, microscopically, it comes from atoms and molecules in the fluid that bounce off, you know, the walls or us or whatever. And the Système International unit for pressure is the Pascal. What's a Pascal? Well, it's force units over area units. One Newton per square meter. Okay, so if we have a static fluid, just, you know, container where the fluid is just sitting there at rest, then the pressure goes up as you go down into that fluid. Pressure increases with depth. Two points at the same vertical position experience the same pressure no matter what the shape of the container is. That can be a little surprising to people, but that is true. Okay, so point two here is a vertical distance h below point one. It doesn't matter that it's been horizontally displaced, that makes no difference. The pressure at point one is what we call P1, the pressure at point two is P2, and P2 is P1 plus rho gh. And again, point two does not have to be directly under point one, just the vertical distance matters. Okay, so how, how do we use this to measure pressure? Well, we can use something called an open tube manometer or barometer. Okay, so in this one, we've got a tube with one end sealed, and we flip that liquid over, in the, flip that tube over full of liquid into this saucer of liquid, and the pressure difference can maintain that column. Okay, so in this case, the height of the column is proportional to the pressure difference. Okay, so that's how you can measure that. Okay, so as if the atmospheric pressure on the outside changes, then that will either force more fluid up into the 
the uh, column or let more fluid come out. Okay, so you can actually measure stuff like as the weather changes gets better and the pressure goes higher or gets worse and the pressure goes lower, you can see that with the level of the water in the water column. Okay, so let's talk about the origin of the buoyant force. Okay, so remember we've got this equation, P2 is P1 plus rho GH, rho GH. And what we've got here is a cube that's immersed in a fluid and we're showing the pressure times area forces on the top and the bottom of the fluid and the side, two, the left and the right sides of the fluid. They're also equal and opposite arrows on the front and the back, which are not shown, but are definitely there. And this is where the buoyant force comes from. The buoyant force is the vector sum of these various pressure times area forces. So because the fluid pressure increases with depth, what you get is a higher pressure on the bottom surface than you have on the top surface. So the pressure times area force on the bottom surface is higher than the downward pressure times area force on the top surface. Okay, so let's look at the net force. The net force is just coming from the pressure difference between the top and the bottom times the area of the top or the bottom. Remember the sides are all canceling out. And if you look at our equation, P2 minus P1, that's delta P, is simply rho GH. So you can replace delta P by rho GH. And then what is the height times the area? Well, that's actually the volume of the cube. Okay, so that's what you get for a fully immersed object. Now, if you've got a floating object, then H is simply the height below the water level. And so instead of the full volume of the cube, as we get for this picture, you would get the volume uh, of fluid displaced by the object instead. Instead, And that, of course, is Archimedes' principle. That's the buoyant force. Okay, so this is where the buoyant force comes from. Just the vector sum of all the pressure times area forces acting on an object in a fluid. All right, so that is our introduction to pressure, and we looked at how it's connected to the buoyant force. The end.